Okay, this time we've got it set up for the log normal distribution because we want to move on and look at two different uh, uh, multi uh, two parameter distributions, see if we can fit better. So I've set it up here with mu, as you can see, is zero, sigma, as you can see, is one, and here we've got the log normal distribution formula, which is this formula here uh, one over x times root two pi sigma times e to the power of minus log x minus mu squared over two sigma squared. So again, we, uh, we projected that down and we um, we look at uh, the difference squared between the two values and we take this value here which is the root mean squared of the difference. We can see that's quite a large error term at the moment. You also notice here I've increased the um, I've made the sort of actual x values halfway between the, the naught and the one. That's because the, the 45 here, you'll remember, was all those items of data between naught and one. The 99 was all those items of data between one and two. So I've just made um, change those values. And also the log normal distribution actually is undefined at x equals zero. So so we, ha we had to just do that. But what you'll notice here is the um, root mean square difference is 0 0.02 compared to we had 0 0.0005 under the exponential so at the moment we're a long way off but that's because we just had these initial two guesses for mu as 0 and sigma as 1 so let's just look at a quick graph to see uh, what this is actually looking like so we'll take the first hundred pieces of data And you can see our uh, log normal distribution is effectively entirely shoved up against the uh, the y-axis, and our actual data is in a completely different place. So we, we need to very dramatically change uh, change these parameters. We're going to try reducing them uh, considerably to see if we can get a bit closer to uh, to the actual distribution. I'm going to initially just try some some numbers randomly. Remember uh, mu can be negative so we can try different amounts minus one try there minus two minus three minus four I'm uh, probably going to have to try different values of sigma as well. Not having a huge success there. Okay, so a bit more trial and error later. We've got something that looks a bit more similar. So 3.9 mu, 0 0.9 sigma. 4 mu, 0 0.9 sigma. 4 mu, 1 sigma. You can see we're gradually getting close, but obviously that's going to be a pretty slow uh, process if we keep doing it like that. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll just change the name of that first. What we're going to do is uh, automate this process by trying out many different values and gradually chiseling down and chiseling down but doing that automatically with the uh, visual basic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some code behind this button. I'll take out what we did. Uh, in fact, it might make sense to do uh, just do a do a new button. I think here. And we're going to take we're take initial values of low mu we will say equals two and high mu say equals say um, t 
10 and low sigma equals 0 or make it 0 0.1 and high sigma equals 5 now we're going to go through each of those uh, go through all the values of mu and all the values of sigma put them into these values here uh, get our root mean square and try and find the lowest root mean square so for mu equals low mu to high mu step and we're going to do it in a hundred steps so it's step high mu minus low mu divided by a hundred for sigma equals low sigma to high sigma step high sigma minus low sigma divided by a hundred and next mu okay I'm gonna do the I'm gonna stop the recording now and do the codes and then we will we'll step through the code when we've seen what's been done okay so what we've got here is a classic piece of uh, optimization code a very very simple example there are far far more sophisticated ways of doing this sort of stuff um, but you're that'll probably be lost in black boxes done by uh, the, the most key parts of the office but just to give a very simple idea of how we do a two-dimensional optimization I'll uh, click this button and then we can step through the code and what I'm going to do here is set low mu and high mu so low mu 2 and high mu is 10 uh, so we're going to search between 2 and 10 values of mu and then we're going to search between values of sigma between 0 0.1 and 5 uh, we set low root mean square there to a thousand because we're going to keep trying to find the lowest root mean square value we can step mu and step sigma are the steps will increase the mu and the sigma with each step so we're going to do 10 steps so it's basically a 10 by 10 grid of values of mu and sigma to try and find the lowest root mean square i.e. the best fit of the uh, of the graph here the uh, the log normal graph with the actual data so again for for x mu which is I, i've just labeled uh, the xl version of mu as x mu so we don't get it confused with the the version up there mu which is the um, the Excel version, so to keep the visual base in the Excel discrete. And I'll set mu to the x mu value, and we'll see that happen there. Okay, and we can see that's obviously not a very good fit, and then set sigma to the x sigma value, so we've got a very poor fit there. Now that is going to come up as the best fit so far, because it's the first one we've done, so we can effectively ignore that. But then we go on to the next value of mu, and sigma and see if we get a better fit so this time it's 0 0.00549 and the, yes it's a slightly better fit and so on and we go into the next value of sigma and the next value of sigma we're not getting a better fit again there as you can pretty much see for looking at the graph so what I'm going to do now is let this run through all these values of x and sigma and each time it finds a better one it sets the new low root mean squared and the new new mu and the new new sigma so if I run it through to there you can see now I've got a, a new mu of 5.2 and uh, a new sigma of 2.06 well I'm just going to stick those in there and see what they actually look like and you can see that's a that's a much better fit so let's uh, what happens now is we set the new 
low mu and the new high mu to be one step mu either side of the new mu. And we do the same with sigma. So we've, we've basically cut down to just either side of where our optimal value is. And then we, we do the same thing again. So let's run the same thing through again. And again, see what's happened. We've got new mu 5.04. And new sigma 1.864 and we've got a better fit still as you can see so what we're doing is we're, we're closing in and closing in on the best fit we can get so I'm going to take the stop out there and just let it run now and you'll see over time it's just cut homing in and homing in on this distribution And there you go, it, it's finished, and it finishes when the step mu gets the less than a, a very small value. So we basically can't fit fit the graph any better than that. And you'll notice that that's where we kept our old value from the Excel distribution, 0 0.0005, and we've got down to 0 0.0003 now. So an appreciably, uh, an appreciably better fit with our two parameter log normal distribution. But you can see immediately, uh, considerably more difficult quite a bit more code I mean, this is a, a very crude piece of code there are more efficient ways of searching through multiple dimensions this is obviously just searching through two dimensions but uh, if you want to search through multiple dimensions it becomes a very slow and inefficient form of code but as you can see from what we've done there it's uh, it's quite adequate for uh, for trying to fit fit data in in just two dimensions Now quite a bit of this work is done by inspection as you probably noticed. So I'll just bring this uh, log normal graph that we looked at in the lecture on Thursday into play again. And uh, let's go through and look at what some of the other graphs look like to see if we think they'll work. So let's look at the Burr distribution. Well I don't think that's going to be as good because um, it's just not as skewed. And if we think about what our our actual data is very skewed so log norm is probably a much better distribution there so let's look at the uh, gamma distribution again it's not very uh, not very skewed at all so unlikely to uh, unlikely to work well exponential we've already tried and that didn't fit too badly to be fair with this data Uh, the Pareto distribution that's going to be similar to the uh, the exponential distribution and the the Y ball again that's not not a terribly skewed distribution but it'd be interesting to just try that because it's a uh, it's a fairly simple formula so uh, Let's look at where our distribution is. It's about it peaks at about uh, ten, doesn't it? So I just zoom out of that. So this distribution. I mean, it's, it's not looking like it's going to work particularly well there with C of 0 0.002 and gamma of 3 but there's no harm in just giving it a try and seeing what happens so I'm going to save that version version 5 and all I need to do now is replace the formula here with the uh, with the new formula I'm going to keep the variables mu and sigma the same so it's going to be going to replace c with 
mu so is going to be mu times sigma times f7 to the power of sigma minus 1 times exponential minus mu times f7 which is x to the power of sigma so a relatively simple graph and <coughs> just change that up there change that to y ball and we're pretty much ready to go well if we look back on this graph here we've got c which is our mu now to 0 0.002 and gamma is 3 so let's just try what happens there well that's not looking uh, not looking amazing but let's try setting up some graphs so low mu is going to have to be 0 point 0 0.01 High mu is going to have to be, say, 0 0.1. Low sigma is going to have to be 0 0.001. And high sigma is going to have to be, say, 10. And we'll see what happens when we run it. So the first run through we've got new mu of 0 0.01 and new sigma of 1.009. It's actually not surprisingly good. It's actually surprisingly good. So let's let's run it again. Let's keep it going this time. It's really struggling to get get much closer. That's about as good as it's going to fit. So that's that's not going to get any closer, I don't think. And we've got to 0 0.0005, so not as close as the uh, as the log normal distribution. So that gives you a reasonable idea there of fitting variables. So I have quite a few issues to consider. Um, very important to just look at the data and you know have a, a sense of what different graphs look like and what's going to fit well. You, a, a graph with a function with two parameters is more likely to be able to fit well than a, a function with one parameter. If you've got a function with one parameter, then perhaps you can cut and splice it for different parts and, and get something closer. Um, but there's quite a lot of judgment and intuition and then there's a sort of element of uh, IT mathematical computation searching for to, to fit the, the parameters as best you can. So quite a few things to think about and quite a few things to write about in a ST7 exam as well. It's not just you're not going to do this piece of analysis in an ST7 exam obviously but you may well have to uh, have to think about these issues and uh, and describe them in in subjective ways or you may get limited data which you can uh, do some sort of analysis with okay I'll try and tidy up some of these graphs for the uh, before the lecture on Thursday and then just have a another quick look at them in, in the lecture just to sort of remind you what sort of things going on okay